Hello everyone, it's Nady, and today we'll be testing out the Urban Decay Naked Ultraviolet Palette. As you gorgeous people know, this is about the products and not the people behind them. Any tiff you may have with them, please cast it away because this is a channel of positive energy. Okay? Thank you. Oh, you sassy little succulents, how you doing today? I hope wherever you're at in the world, you are having a marvelous day so far. I am kind of just waking up, but it's a beautiful day outside, so I'm gonna film, go sit outside, do some work, and have a grand old time, damn it. But this little beast just arrived on my doorstep, and I could never say no to a purple palette. I could be in the middle of a damn wedding and have to pull this out and play with it. Purples are my kryptonite, and I was a little bit confused by this palette because I didn't know if maybe these were like UV reactive shadows, but I'm pretty sure that it's just ultra violet. It's a cute little play on words and these colors are kind of reminiscent of when you hold up a UV light, so I understand it. Do I wish they were like black light reactive? A fucking course, but we'll deal without it. Although this green in the middle, maybe, maybe? I'll let somebody else try it because I don't know where my black bulb went. Anyways, before I open this beast up, let's hop our toned little asses over to C4HA and see what this is about. All right, this is an eyeshadow palette, obviously, with purple and neutral shadows and matte shimmer and glitter finish alongside a holographic pearl transformer. Bitch, where? I don't know, maybe this green is supposed to be holographic? I'm not sure, but none of them really look like a hollow taco. I'm probably missing it, but neither the outside packaging nor Sephora says if this is like vegan or cruelty free, so I really can't tell you if it is or not. Out of the four stars that this has, the lowest says pretty but not worth the price. This person got a free from Influencer and that don't mean a damn thing. They still don't like it. Disappointing. No pigmentation. The colors are repeated with other Urban Decay palettes. Honestly, they've come out with so many palettes, it would be hard not to repeat, but still, we don't like repeats. Like, why pay for the same thing you already have? Worst palette they ever made, there's only three mattes in it? Really? Two, three, oh my god, they're right! Hmm. Okay, well, let's look at the positives here. That is in a different language. Oh, it's in Spanish. Okay, they basically said it's very, very pretty, super pigmented, and they definitely recommend it. Yay, Rosetta Stone is paying off. Love, love, love. They're very soft to the touch, making it very easy to blend. Smooth application, no follow. Colors are vibrant. A purple lover's dream, yet the picture they provide is all brown with a teeny tiny speckle of purple right in the inner corner. Honey, that is not representing the true purple lovers. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at this because I've not even and open this. I don't even really know what she looks like other than what I saw from Instagram pictures. Oh, oh damn, that packaging is very, very pretty. It's like double layered, so it's 3D kind of. Can you even see that? Oh, it's stunning. The back kind of reminds me of the painting The Scream with the guy like who's got his curvy head and stuff. I really like that. Let's see if there's a little protector condom thing in there. No, there's just a brush. Oh my god, I didn't know it had a brush. Oh wait, on the back it literally says it has a brush. What the fuck? Now let's open it. <gasps> uh, oh, that is pretty, but honestly... It kind of looks like an elf palette. Really did need one of those protectors. Like this mirror is quite dusty. Not that it really matters. I mean, the moment I touched this, the mirror would have been destined for doom anyway. So I don't really care. But presentation wise, it's a little bit sloppy. But the purples really, really are pretty. And I don't know that I've really ever seen a shadow like this. Maybe you can see it. I, I don't know. Ooh, look at how messy my desk is. That's sexy. But the shadow is quite intriguing. It goes from blue to green to that's about it. Definitely not hollow. Let me just feel it just for shits and giggles. <gasps> oh, that is really pretty. Again, though, not hollow. Maybe over the other colors. Let me try doing like, I don't know, this lavender. That's nice. Not the most pigmented thing in the world, but let's try it right there. Oh, that's pretty and super soft. So that's what it looks like before I put any hollow taco over it. And let me go ahead and um, no, I just kind of made it look like a bruise. It is very, very pretty. It doesn't necessarily give a holographic effect, but it did add like a purple shift to it. So maybe you could build this up to be like all the colors much prettier in person than it is on camera. I don't really think you can see much, but take my word, she's very pretty. Oh my God, but they wipe off. Like this is a dry cloth and it just wiped away, which tells me that these probably really need a good clingy primer. Need a primer like my ex. Clingy, a little bit sticky and a never leave. So on that note, my fabulous fuck buddies, let's go ahead and swatch and do a look with this bitch. Y'all know the song. Are you ready? It's watching time. 
Wait a second. So I'm on Sephora's website and I'm seeing a little warning underneath the ingredients. This definitely has carmine in it, which makes this not vegan. Hence why we didn't see it cruelty free on the packaging. It actually has quite a few things underneath the wording thing. So you might want to check this out before purchasing in case you have any allergies. I actually do have an allergy to things that are in some purples and I can't remember what it is. So we'll see how this goes. And here we have everything swatched. I don't know if my swatches on camera made everything look blown out, but in person they're very very vibrant. The shimmers are a little bit patchy though, which I've not really seen with shimmers before. With these ones, I kind of had to rub my finger up and down once, which that doesn't usually happen, but it can. Either way, these shadows are very, very pretty, and I think this middle green one definitely complements all of the shadows. Like, it is so fucking pretty. It's like such a good contrast. Is this palette worth $50 so far? Uh, I wouldn't say that from the swatches, but maybe quality-wise it'll be really good. I don't necessarily mind that there's only a couple mattes in here because I do have other palettes that I can pull from. I would rather have a palette filled with awesome supplemental shadows than have a palette filled with like eight normal basic shadows that I have a million of. With that being said, I do think you could create quite a few awesome looks with this, even if you just have these three mattes to work with. Like, put either of these as a base and then a little shimmer on top. Like, you have a lot to work with. Probably not a lot if you don't like purples, but if you do like purples, Yes. And once again, I'm just going to take a dry cloth and see if these just wipe away or have any sticking power. And no, they just wiped off. They did leave a little bit of a sheen, but they are gone. Not that it really matters. Like, I always use a primer anyway, but there are shadows out there that don't really need a primer. And these bitches are not them. Anyways, let's dive into this look. What do I want to use as a primer? I feel like I want to be glowy today. Let me turn my fan up. Otherwise, I'm going to be glowy and sweaty. All right, for primer, I'm going in with this The Professional Hydrating Primer with a little bit of BB Plus by Gerard Cosmetics. I did already kind of prime with some face oils I've been testing, but I don't know. I just really feel like glowing today for some reason. I think because it's just like the heart of summer right now and I want to look youthful and fresh. Anything to avoid actually growing up. Does anybody else feel like a child inside? Like, is that ever going to stop? Even if I'm 40, 50, 60, or 70, I'm never going to feel like an actual adult. Maybe it's because I never leave my house. That could be why. Anyways, for foundation, I'm going to mix my Uma Butete with my Dior Backstage. Hopefully this color isn't like too terribly off, but I mean, we know what channel we're watching. It probably will be. And then a little bit of Dior Forever Skin Corrector. And then we'll set under the eyes with some Hourglass Finishing Powder. I think that's what it's called. I don't know what it is. <sighs> Oh god, my nose is so itchy. I'm just gonna set my whole face lightly with this powder just so it doesn't melt the fuck off. And for eye primer, we'll go in with the Gerard Cosmetics Clean Canvas. Oh my god. I just got an email from the person who's designing the artwork for my palette. I already had it designed, but I wanted it reworked and oh, I can't wait to see it. Oh my God. Okay. That's going to be my little treat for after filming this video. For the eye look, even though to me, this is more of a supplemental palette, I'm going to try to create a look with everything here because I do think there's plenty to work with. So let's start with the lightest shade. That is Mind Slip. We are going to place that all along the crease line back and forth. So far, it seems pretty okay. I think. Yes. Yes. It does seem to blend out very easily. If you're the kind of person that likes to wear and use minimal makeup, I do think this palette would be a pretty good choice. Although this color probably is very common amongst all of their naked palettes. So really, if you don't like purples, like literally any of their other palettes probably have this half. So normally at this point, I would probably dip into that hacked shade, which is a little bit deeper, but I think I'm going to dip into the third matte, which is this lavender. And we'll try placing that all along the crease line back and forth right there. Oh my, it doesn't really show up that great. Hmm. I mean, you can kind of see it, but it's so fucking light that it's really difficult. Maybe if we do go in with hacked first and that purple lays over a darker color, maybe it'll be a deeper purple. So I'm going to place it right here on the inner corner and bring it around all the way to the outer corner and just go back and forth with it. And we are left with a little bit of kind of like a mauve dusty rose color, but not really purple. I wonder if I could use some of these purples, even though they are kind of like satiny shimmers. Maybe they would blend out to be on the matte side. I'm gonna take a little bit more of this like lilac lavender and just try to blend out the edges with it. Hmm. I feel like I could have gotten this exact same look with like one mauve shadow. Let me try using like warning, which is kind of a satin. Let's try placing it right here on the outside and then bringing it in the crease and like blending it back and forth just like we did with that other shade. And that's pretty, but because it is a shimmer, it's not really sticking down. Like you probably want to apply it with a finger instead. And I'm not about to blend out my whole fucking eye look with my finger. I can do great things with my fingers, but not when it comes to the eyes. <laughs> 
Although I guess there is a clear difference between the sides. Like this one is more pinky and in person it doesn't really have that much of a shimmer. It's just pretty and kind of lilac-y. I don't know. I feel like there's just so many better laid out purple palettes out there even from like ColourPop. And for 50 bucks, I just feel like even though the quality so far is pretty good, we could do better. Although blended out, that shimmer does look quite pretty. Let me see if maybe I can do the same with a little bit of digital so that I can deepen up the inner and outer corners a bit. Oh God, that made it look like a unicorn sewer. Ugh, a very patchy unicorn sewer at that. But once blended out, it really isn't awful, but it's just kind of weird using shimmers like I would a matte. It might look totally different on screen, but in person, it's really, really pretty. There were a few patchy moments there for a second, but once you kind of run your brush over them a little bit, then the pigment disperses, it looks fine in the end. So I'm not mad so far, I'm just not sold yet. And then to cut out the center of the eye, I'm gonna go in with this Croyline White TV Paint Stick, just so that there's a nice light poppin' base for things to stick to. And I have still not yet mastered the art of a halo eye, so don't judge me if this is terrible. But the only way I'll get better is if I practice, so why not do it in front of thousands of people? All right, I look like a fucking clown. So let's start deepening up the edges. I'm gonna go in with some purple dust. And with that, I'm gonna place that right here on the edges and slowly get lighter and lighter. Wow, that is super dark. But once you kind of start to blend it around, it is workable. It's just not like my favorite shadow I've ever used. And then let's work our way into the lighter shade. So I'm gonna go in with some euphoric and place that a little bit further in. Finishing up on the center with a little bit of lucid that I'm just gonna finger this shit out. Ooh, <gasps> that is very pretty. Like the other ones are nice, but if they sold this one in a single, I would buy just this instead of like the whole palette. Okay, so it's not really a halo eye anymore, but these shadows combined are so pretty. Like this green topper, Oh, it almost single-handedly makes the palette worth it, but keyword, almost. Like, I've almost won the lottery, but I haven't, so almost is a huge word here. For the lower lash, I really want to see how warning performs. So let's start with blending that out back and forth all along the lower lash line. Ooh, that's really pretty. Actually, you know, I'm going to take more of that and kind of drag it on the low side because I think I want to put a purple above that. And yes, the shimmer does still stay, so if you're not the kind of person that likes to put shimmers on the lower lash, then you're probably not gonna like this, but I don't really mind that. I've kind of been getting into it. But also, when have I ever said no to anything? And then I think I'm gonna take some Euphoric and I'm gonna blend that right along the lashes. Then I'm also gonna take some of that Lucid shade and plop it right here on the inner corner. I know it's kind of dramatic, but I love that color. And then just for extra, extra highlight, I'm gonna dip into Trippin and place that right on the tear duct as well. And let's go ahead and line the lower lash with some black. This is a MAC Black Coal Pencil. And I really wanna see if maybe I could lay down one of these shimmers on top of this. <gasps> Ooh, I don't know if you can see that. It might look like total shit on camera, but it's so pretty in person. <laughs> and then I'm gonna take a little bit of digital and place it right along the lashes. Just to add a little bit of a smoky vibe to this. You know what I am noticing as I'm finishing up my lower lash? Quite a bit of what was up here is gone. And I did put it onto a really sticky base, so that's interesting. I don't know if maybe I just layered too many things on top of each other, but it's kind of fading already. All right, the eyes are done. For contour, I'm gonna go into this CoverGirl Chocoholic palette. And then for blush, I'm gonna dip into this Lunar Beauty Moon Prism Blush palette and mix these two right here. Lately, I've kind of been trying this thing where I put blush closer to where I normally put a highlighter. I used to put it right here on the apples of my cheeks, which is totally fine, but I feel like it kind of makes my cheeks look a little bit bigger and I'm on a slim face. And so when I put it here, it gives like a runway kind of look. I like it. Then a little bit of highlighter. This is Indiscretion by Laura Mercier. And it is more of a subtle highlighter, which is exactly what I want today. It kind of gives a glowy, illuminated look. And I don't know why, but today I'm just obsessed with being fucking glowy. And here we are with the final look for lips. I went in with Hank and Henry's Love You So Much, as well as Lunar Beauty's Daydream and then Oprah's Nude Potion. I wouldn't think I'd have to combine so many to get such a basic bitch pink, but I love it. So this eye look, I do really like it as well, but 
damn, that was a little bit of a trip to get there. It's not that I dislike this palette, like I don't think it's bad, but if you're the kind of person that likes to do big glamorous looks on the regs like me, then this palette probably isn't gonna be for you. Mainly because I have like three or four drugstore palettes that I could have easily created the same exact look with in like a quarter of the time. However, if you're a simple makeup wearer and maybe you just want like a brown eye with a splash of purple on the inner corner or something, then this palette probably would be perfect for you. This green, this is a game changer. It's so fucking pretty. Just like my peony, cameras just do not do it justice. But you could take this shade and probably put it over absolutely anything and it would just enhance it. Does this shade alone make the whole palette worth 50 bucks? No, but it is a selling point for me. Okay, so I don't dislike it, but I don't love it. Like the quality is kind of wishy-washy. Like even the shimmers were a little bit splotchy, which is weird for a shimmer. Oh my God, it just spit so much. But it's just weird having to like blend out a shimmer and hope that it creates a matte. I just feel like there's so many purple palettes out there that are way easier to work with and just have a better variety. So if you do like simple makeup, but you want a little pop of color, then yes, you'll probably like this. But if you want to be like a hag in a handbasket with purples, then probably not the palette for you because you are going to have to work with a lot of shimmers. And for me, shimmers underneath the eyes, they can look good. But a lot of times it just enhances whatever the fuck I have going on under there in a really bad way. But it's not an impossible palette. I just don't know that it's one that I'm necessarily going to ever use again. But that green, oh God, that green would honestly be the only reason why I would keep this palette. And I don't know that that single shade is worth $50. If you have pretty much any of the other naked palettes, you do already have five of the shadows. All you're getting is these shadows right here, which they are not unique at all. They're nothing special. They do kind of fly off your eye. Like already there is evidence of fading. It doesn't mean they're not pretty, but like together as a whole, to me, it's not really worth it. To others, it totally might be, and that's completely fine. Is it beautiful to look at? Yes, absolutely. But I honestly don't care how beautiful something is. If it's not worth the price, it's not worth the price. My word honestly means pickles. All that matters is what you think of this. You can see how it works. You can see how it looks on the eyes. You can make a decision. But yes, there you go. Thank you so much for being here. I am doing a few giveaways. I'm giving away a set of Wayne Goss brushes, as well as something else. What am I giving away? I don't remember. I'll be sure to link you down below. All you have to do is be subscribe to this channel and please stay subscribed. I love having you. There are a few other little things that are optional, but the more things you do, the more entries you have and the more chances you have of winning. Also, if you'd like to support me and my channel a little bit more, please feel free to join us on Patreon. It's patreon.com slash poplux. There you get videos a day early. You get Patreon only content. There's lots of little nuggets over there. Plus best part, it's cheap and fun just like me. And like always, please be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell down below so that you're notified anytime I upload a new video. Don't forget my newest collection of highlighters, including black ice, which does change black to white is available at thepoplex.com. Also, my latest album, Kiss of Fame, is available everywhere online that music is sold. Thank you so much to everyone who's supporting them. Comment down below. Let me know what you thought of this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You can follow me on Snapchat, Instagram, and Twitter at official Nady, and you can follow me online at thepoplex.com. Thank you so much for watching. I love you all, and I will see you again soon. Bye.